it is Wednesday and I hope this light is okay. I'm running out of it a little bit, so I thought I better record. Um, last video, I said that I was going to do another book haul because I have quite a few books that I purchased a week or so ago at Goodwill. And a lot of books, as it turns out. I didn't count them, but there's probably close to uh, about 15-ish. So some of them, just a couple of them though, are for my classroom library. I'll show you those first really quickly. Anytime I see anything from the Ranger in Time series or the I Survive series, I pick them up because I do book club with my kiddos with these two series and a lot of other ones, but I always add to my collections as often as I can. So I bought these two for my classroom library and there was only one other book that was a, I don't, I don't know if I want to say it's a YA book. No, I don't know, maybe. Anyway, this is it. It's called The State of Grace by Rachel Lucas. I've never seen this book before. I've never heard of this book before, which is kind of weird, I feel like. Um, I'm going to look at the publishing date or copyright date, I'm sorry, 2017. So it's relatively new and it's about Grace who is autistic and just how she copes with everything um, in her world. And I just thought, I just love reading about kids that have special needs because I work with kids that have special needs and they're near and dear to my heart. And so I thought this would be a great read. So these uh, three were the only kid books. This one won't go in my classroom library, these two will. So next, and I'm trying really hard not to shake the table. I'm using a tripod that's a little sketchy. See, I did it again and I didn't even touch. Well, I did touch something, but I tried not to. Okay, this next book I got is called Reading with Patrick by Michelle Cuyo or Cuo. I'm not sure how you say that. But this is a book about a uh, Teach for America volunteer and how he is changed forever by, oh, I'm sorry, it's a she, is changed forever by the little boy that she uh, works with. So the author is the teacher. I knew that when I read it the first time. Anyway, this looks really good, and it says um, just one of the um, people who said something about it says, Every American should read Michelle Cuyo's remarkable memoir, a defining story for our times, and abidingly a testament to the power of language and of books. So, right up my alley. Gonna read that one pretty soon. I don't know when I'm gonna read all of these. I'm in the middle of, right now, reading... Um, Eleanor Oliphant is just fine. I think it's what it's is is completely fine. I'll put a picture up. Um, I'm reading it on my library app. I'm also finishing up the uh, book called Hidden Valley Road, which is amazing. And I will also put a picture of that one up here. I'm listening to that one on my library app. And um, I will talk about those later since I'm not holding them in my hand right now, but those two I'm finishing up. So after that, I will pick another book or 12 to read. This one is called The Beginning of Everything, Everyone Gets a Tragedy. I think actually now that I'm remembering, this one is, this one I would say probably is a young adult book. Look, I got a free bookmark. Aw, I love the Goodwill. Anyway, this one is by Robin Schneider. And I'll read the back. It says, Ezra Faulkner was supposed to be homecoming king, but that was before. Before his girlfriend cheated on him, before a car accident shattered his leg, and before he fell in love with the new girl, Cassidy Thorpe. Just sounded cute. So I thought I would read that one. It was written in... 2013, copyright date of 2013, and I'm always looking for books that I can recommend to either friends with older kids or also to do a book study on, so who knows, it sounded kind of cool. This next book I have on my holds right now on my library app, 
I'm so excited I found it there at Goodwill. Perfect shape. The only thing I hate about Goodwill is their stickers are so sticky. They don't ever come off all the way. Okay, so this one is called The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. It's by Kim Michelle Richardson. Hold it there for a second. It says, the folks of Troublesome Creek have to scrap for everything. Everything except books, that is. Thanks to Roosevelt's Kentucky Pack Horse Library Project, Troublesome's got its very own traveling librarian, Cussie Mary Carter. Cussie's not only a book woman, however, she's also the last of her kind. Her skin is shade of blue, unlike most anyone else. Not everyone is keen on Cussie's family or the government's new book program, and along with her treacherous treacherous route, Cussie faces doubters at every turn. If Cussie wants to bring the joy of books to the complex and hard scrabble Kentuckians, she's going to have to confront dangers and prejudice as old as the Appalachians and suspicion as deep as the holler. Inspired by the true blue-skinned people of Kentucky in the brave and dedicated Kentucky Pack Horse Library Service of the 1930s, The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek is a story of raw courage, fierce strength, and one woman's belief that books can carry us anywhere, even back home. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to read that one. Um, I think I'm probably going to break this video up into two videos because I have only talked about a third so far of the books that I got. Trying not to shake the table. I did it anyway. Okay, so I don't know much about this author except for that I see her all the time um, pop up in bookstores on my library app and um, uh, like Audible everywhere I see her and I've, I've never read a book by her that that I can remember which mm -hmm. Anyway, this one is called the witch elm by Tana French and It was I kind of tried to stay with books that were relatively new just because I don't know I was in a mood um, 2018 is the copyright date it was named a best book of 2018 by NPR the New York Times Book Review, The Boston Globe, Lit Hub, Vulture, Slate, Elle, Vox, and Electric Literature. An extraordinary Stephen King and mesmerizing Los Angeles Times standalone novel from the master of crime and suspense. Toby is, happy, is a happy-go-lucky charmer who's been out celebrating with friends when the night takes a turn that will change his life. He surprises two burglars who beat him up and leave him for dead. Struggling to recover from his injuries, beginning to understand that he might never be the same man again, he takes refuge in his family's ancestral home to care for his dying uncle. Then a skull is found in the trunk of an elm tree in the garden, and as detectives close in, Toby is forced to face the possibility that his past may not be what he has always believed. Sounds good. And then I think I'll leave the other one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I have in a stack over here and just show you the two. Um, there were a couple nonfiction in the ones I already told you about, but this one, you know, how many of us are not always looking for the perfect, I'm just going to call it eating system. I know I am. And apparently M&M's don't juice real well because you know drink juice I tried it didn't work out just kidding it was Oreos um, I'm always trying to look for the next greatest you know healthiest diet and I think I finally found it in this book called eat dirt I feel like we've come full circle now don't worry about the food don't plant a garden just eat the dirt Anyway, I honestly bought this book because it made me laugh, and it looks kind of interesting. And I do, in all seriousness, believe a lot of the truth behind leaky gut syndrome. And when I'm being my best self, which has not been for a really long time, which is why I have like seven chins right now, but when I'm being my best self and I eat better and I follow, you know, some sort of a guideline like this I do feel better so there's that maybe we'll get back to that place but eat dirt just cracked me up so this is by Dr. Josh Axe and I think I've read I feel like I've read or maybe listened to podcasts by him I don't know but um it just made me laugh so you know anyway eat dirt and the other um cookbooky kind of thing I got because I collect them don't really use them but I collect them um, the hungry girl these recipes are f 
fun and easy and sometimes um, a fun. I just call them fun. They're easy and they're quick and they're the stuff you mostly have around. And I, I mean, look at how fat the book is. It just is fun. And the inside has some sections with cool pictures like that. But also, I have a rule whenever I pick up a cookbook, not like Eat Dirt, that's not a cookbook, that was a um, guide to better living. But when I pick up a cookbook, I, I open it in three different places. And if I run into three recipes that I think I would eat, then I buy the book, if it's you know one I would buy. So here I open it up and it says fajitas in a foil pack. Yes, please, sounds fabulous. Another spot here oh my goodness all four um, best barbecue chicken pizza the great greek pizza garlic chicken pizza thin crust pepperoni and mushroom pizza probably never going to actually make my own pizza but they sure are fun to read about and the last one two good twice baked potato mm -hmm. super sized kick and chicken pot pie and baked chili surprise so if i can find something in there that I like. This was two dollars at Goodwill. Two bucks and it doesn't look like the person who uh, donated it even opened it. So and I only buy books like that with the exception of one I'll show you next video. Really had a struggle um, pulling the plug to actually buy this book because something's a little bit wrong with it but it's one I really wanted so I bought it. Anyway I'm going to end the video here. If you found anything, uh, any books that you want to read, anything entertaining or useful, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so I can help my channel grow. Thank you. Bye.